Hello, I'm Professor Tim Spector of the Zoe Health Study. A new global health emergency has been declared by the WHO for monkeypox. I'm going to be talking today about what that means for all of us who's getting it and what you can do to avoid it. I'll also be giving you the latest COVID updates where we're now starting to see cases coming down uh, fairly fast after weeks of climbing and also be looking at how these new variants are changing and which one is dominant and which symptoms are associated with those and you should look out for. And finally, got some interesting updates on common symptoms reported in the app, which are nothing to do with COVID, as well as some new research on menopause and HRT. But let's dive into this week's data, starting with the monkeypox story, which uh, this week the WHO declared as a global health emergency. This means it's deemed to be a general public health risk across the world needing a coordinated international response and is not likely to just disappear. And this is similar to what happened in the early stages of COVID. So it means we can't be uh, too relaxed about it. Um, so this is very similar to where we were in the very early stages of COVID. Now, there have been about 16,000 definite infections reported globally, um, over 2,000 of those in the UK. Now, we know that's likely a big underestimate, as many may be mild, uh, small skin rashes that are generally ignored. Um, transmission is mostly within interconnected sexual networks, mainly with men who are having sex with other men, but it's not exclusive. And I think it's 96% uh, of cases are men, but we are seeing more cases in women emerge uh, in the UK and, and, and in Spain, according to colleagues there. Um, now, rates are going up. It's not clear how fast, uh, but it does seem to be a fairly stable rate rather than a sort of out of control exponential rate. Now, it's less, less lethal than the African variant, where we're in Europe seeing about 3 to 6% death rate. But people are staying in hospital a long time, and it's definitely not a pleasant disease. It, uh, it starts in ways uh, that are fairly easy to identify. Most start with a facial rash. And... Uh, this is these pox-like lesions, which don't look like anything else. And uh, that facial rash generally comes first, um, followed by a rash on the, the genitals and around the uh, rectal area. And these are a few of the, the slightly gory pictures that you may want to look at or close your eyes uh, at this stage. Now, um, it also can cause general flu-like symptoms like any virus, fatigue, fever, muscle aches, uh, swollen lymph nodes, and a rash can occur anywhere on the body. And uh, the sores, which may be painful, start, start out as flat red spots and progress to firm raised lesions that fill with clear fluid and then pus. And they resemble a sort of larger form of chicken pox uh, or other um, sexually transmitted diseases, a bit like herpes or syphilis. And you can see some people who have scars from previous infections, which may have gone unnoticed. Now, the way to avoid it is uh, by avoiding close personal contact with someone infected, particularly skin to skin, kissing, respiratory droplets, very close range. It's nothing like COVID for that. Um, and the virus can be spread in theory through clothes, bed linen and surfaces because they found the virus on it but it's not clear uh, how infectious that actually is. Now, it's not known yet whether monkeypox is directly transmitted through uh, uh, vaginal fluid, semen, uh, et cetera, but it does spread with sores during sex. Uh, what's interesting is no reports of medical staff getting it from patients, so uh, it's pretty hard to catch. Uh, in a normal environment. Um, and the good news is it's very similar to smallpox, which we've already got a vaccine for, and this has proved effective against monkeypox. And uh, I don't think we, we're seeing many 
case at all of, of people who uh, were born before 1974 and had smallpox vaccinations. Uh, you can get access to a vaccine if you've wanted to groups of high risk. So do speak to your local uh, sexual health clinic uh, as they may be able to offer this to you. Other thing to realize it can take up to three weeks for symptoms to appear if you've been in contact with someone monkeypox. So do stay alert for symptoms, uh, particularly of skin uh, to skin or sexual contact with uh, someone at risk. Uh, we're continually monitoring this for any increases in symptoms. Uh, but it's really too rare for us to put this onto the app. Uh, if uh, it does get to that stage, we will introduce it. So that's the update on monkeypox. Um, back to COVID, the virus that is uh, hundreds of thousands of times more common, and nearly everyone has probably had it by now, at least once. Um, and while rates have been coming down from the record peaks of a couple of weeks ago, 34% down, they're still very high, 231,000 cases a day, one in 16 people uh, still have the virus, uh, and it's going down across all age groups and regions, uh, which is very good news. doesn't mean that there aren't isolated areas where it might be going up, and I do get emails from you on that and tweets, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, overall, the larger regions, it's, it's all going down which is good news. Um, remember, most people are still new infections. So although it appears that it's everyone you know is getting reinfected, a lot of people who weren't infected at all are getting this and accounting for most of the infections. We've uh, tweaked our app. Our technicians behind the scenes have done a great job and they uh, can now deliver these results for breakfast time rather than waiting till uh, late in the afternoon. So this allows us to stay uh, really super fast. And you can see just how quickly we're doing when compared to the official government uh, sponsored surveys, the ONS comparison, which uh, seems to be getting lagging us even more every week we look at it. You can see these charts here. Uh, the yellow is the ONS one. Uh, they've just started to, uh, to peak whereas we, we showed that um, well over a week ago, perhaps about 10 days ago. Um, so we're way ahead of them, so do look out. If you want to find the latest, just keep up to date on our, our figures. Um, in terms of variants, the BA5 variant is now the dominant one, in, according to the UKHA, but nearly 80%. Um, and... The mixed picture we had a couple of weeks is now getting clearer. It looks like BA5 is taking over. The other variant to watch out for is BA2.75, um, which was identified internationally earlier this month. Uh, it's now given, been given a separate designation, V22 uh, Joule 01, um, and it's going to be reported separately. Um, as of the 18th of July, there were um, 24 cases of BO2.75 in the UK, 20 in England, uh, and we're giving more information if this turns out to be, uh, to get off the ground and uh, be any different to the others. Now, COVID symptoms, this is how uh, they currently stand on the app with, uh, you can see, um, Sore throat is dominant at uh, 59%. Um, and as BA5 takes over, it's going to take us a couple of weeks to see if this changes this list of symptoms um, in any way. But at the moment, it's still really ones to look out for. Sore throat, headache, um, uh, fatigue is the ones maybe to differ from other, other viruses. Um, for non-COVID symptoms, um, since we started getting you to report everything that's going on in your bodies. Uh, we've noticed a trend in one particular one is that we saw uh, a big increase in urinary frequency, the number of times uh, going to the toilet. And the reasons for this are unclear. This could be um, an increase in urinary infections. It could also be the heat wave. 
um, people drinking more liquids in case they uh, dehydrated and, and that's what they've noticed. Um, but interesting, 27% of, of you that reported this increase also reported some previous uh, diagnosis of kidney or uh, urinary uh, disease beforehand. So we're going to keep an eye on, eye, eye on this and see if there's any pattern or it's just a one-off. Uh, looking at menopause, um, we know that uh, many of the users are pre or uh, I should say peri or postmenopausal, um, and it turns out that HRT is uh, being taken by about 30 percent. That's slightly more than the national average, but not hugely so. And uh, most common form of this is the estrogen, estrogen gel and taking oral progesterone. Uh, most of you have been taking it for, uh, for less than a year um, and certainly less than five years. And people used to say that um, it caused weight gain and certainly uh, many GPs are still saying there is a danger of weight gain if you take out HRT. Um, but uh, the, the data on this from other studies show this isn't the case, and our data back this up. Though there was only a trivial difference in body mass index between women taking HRT, 26.8, and those not taking it, 26.3. So I don't think there's any clinical difference there. Um, so in conclusion, good news is COVID is still going down but rates are still really high. And so it's still very easy to get infected. BA5 looks like being the, uh, the dominant one for a while. It's outcompeted the others. And so we'll start to see the symptoms just of that very soon. Um, and of course it can give you a reinfection even if you've just had uh, one of the other Omicrons like BA2 uh, quite easily. Uh, monkeypox is coming up, but relatively slowly and if you are worried and that one of those high risk groups get a free vaccine and do let us know in your comments below if you've heard about people with some pox rashes or you think this has been very uh, underestimated but in general if you keep an eye on all your symptoms make a note in the app if uh, anything changes so finally do remember to like and subscribe our channel share the app with friends and family support science and keep logging. And if you're going on holidays, have a great time. See you in a few weeks.